So in the last video, we learned that the typical reaction of the alkene is addition. The haloalkanes, like the alkanes, have single bonds only. So those, therefore, are going to undergo substitution reactions. So again, there are a few of them we need to know. Let's take a, an example. Let's say we take uh, CH3, CH2, Cl. Chloroethane. So, first reaction they can undergo, if you react them with concentrated ammonia, they will turn the chlorine into an NH2 group, in other words, an amine. So, chloroethane becomes ethanamine, concentrated ammonia. Another one is if you react them with KCN under reflux, reflux is simply a means of boiling the solution for a length of time without losing their contents. Remember, these are all organic compounds. They're all volatile. They all vaporize easily. So if you boil them, they're going to turn into a gas and that's the end of it. If you want them to stay in the flask long enough to react, then you have to make sure you keep them in the flask. And reflux is simply, you have your flask here, you have a condenser above it. Now, usually the condenser goes that way. You boil, it condenses, you collect. This time, the condenser is directly above. So as the liquid boils, it goes up into the condenser, condenses and drips back down again. That's how you keep the liquid in. You can't put a top on it, otherwise it would explode. So you have to keep the liquid in, and that's what reflux is. I don't think anybody's going to ever ask you that, but in case you see the word. Now, potassium cyanide contains the Cn-, minus, and that will replace the chlorine there to give you CH3, CH2, Cn. This one, hopefully you remember the naming of the nitriles. This has got three carbons. Don't forget to include every carbon, even if it's part of the functional group. This has three carbons. Therefore, this would be propan something and the nitrile ending propan nitrile or propane nitrile if you don't want to run the two ends together. All right, both substitution reactions. The third and final substitution reaction is with an alkali like sodium hydroxide. And if that alkali is in aqueous conditions and we boil it, then we turn the haloalkane into an alcohol. Again, pretty obvious, Cl goes, OH comes in. There is one final reaction of the haloalkanes that you need to be aware of, but it's not substitution. However, it does involve this same reagent. Now, if you do this reaction instead, instead of using NaOH aqueous, what we're going to do is use NaOH in alcoholic solution, in other words, in something like ethanol, then instead of the OH substituting for the Cl, the, the, this acts as a base and it actually removes an acid, HCl. So you form the alkene CH2, CH2. So what this has done is taken HCl away and left a double bond behind, turning the chloroalkane into an alkene.